All right, let's talk about a specific prostaglandin known as PGE2. Now, PGE2 is actually the most abundant prostanoid that we're going to talk about, and it used to give me a lot of grief, which is why I want to explain all of its functions and what it does, because it can do a really a lot of cool things, and it has a lot of important roles, but it can kind of be hard to keep track of everything it does. So before we talk about PGE2, we kind of have to talk about something called COX. And COX is uh, cyclooxygenase, and we have two different COX enzymes. One called COX1, so cyclooxygenase 1, and then COX2, cyclooxygenase 2. So COX1 is a constitutive enzyme meaning that it's always expressed basically at like a basal level. So you're always going to have COX-1 being expressed, whereas COX-2 is more involved in inflammatory responses, so it is usually induced. So it's not constitutive, it's not like always being active, it's more induced. And so this is going to be important because PGE2 can actually be produced by COX-1 and COX-2, right, depending on what cell you're in. And so that's going to play a role in helping us determine what the function of PGE2 is going to be. So we're actually going to start with COX-2. And the first function of PGE2 derived from COX-2 is going to be as an algesic. So it's going to be an algesic. And what an analgesic is going to be is basically the opposite of an analgesic. So analgesic is kind of a painkiller, while algesics are going to promote pain. And so what you want is you want something that can help you determine if you're feeling pain on specific receptors called transient receptor potential ion channels or TRIP channels. And what they're going to do is they're going to sensitize those receptors to algesic mediators. And so basically, it's going to allow you to feel pain. So if you have a COX-2 inhibitor, right, like an NSAID, that's a COX-2 inhibitor, you can act, you can use that COX-2 inhibitor as an analgesic. So you can use it as a painkiller. Now, the other function of PGE2 that we're going to talk about is in terms of pyresis. So pyresis is basically going to do with body temperature. So if you have formation of PGE2, you are going to have elevated body temperature. And so we're going to write pyresis here. And this is COX-2 induced. And this is basically going to happen in the brain. So you can have NSAIDs that are going to target your COX-2 in the brain to prevent PGE2 formation. And that's going to reduce your body temperature. But if you're not having that, if you have a lot of PGE2 um, floating around, then you can increase your body temperature, which can lead to fever. That's why NSAIDs can uh, kind of reduce fever because they're blocking the COX-2 uh, the COX-2 enzyme, their COX-2 inhibitors. So they're going to prevent fever or at least bring down the fever if you have one. Okay, so now the other important function of PGE2 has to do with the GI tract. And it's going to play a very big role in the GI tract as sort of a protective mechanism. And if it's going to be kind of protecting your GI tract, this is going to be something that you want to happen all the time. You don't want it to be inducible. You want this to be constitutive. So this is going to be PGE2 formed from COX-1. And so we're going to write GI function here for PGE2 produced by COX-1, and we'll, and we'll go over the specific examples of how it's going to do that. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to inhibit stomach acid formation. Stomach acid, we'll, we'll say stomach acid secretion, actually. Stomach acid secretion. So it's also going to enhance mucosal blood flow. So it's going to enhance mucosal blood flow. Now remember, this is going to be protective, right? Because your mucosa is protecting your stomach from your acid. So enhance mucosal blood flow. And then it's going to also promote the secretion of mucus. 
promote intestinal secretion of cytoprotective mucus. So why is this important? Well, if you're taking an NSAID that is a COX-1 inhibitor, so you're taking an NSAID that has a COX-1 inhibitor, that means you're not going to be forming PGE2 via COX-1, and that you're not going to be having these beneficial GI functions like inhibiting stomach acid secretion, enhancing mucosal blood flow, promoting secretion of cytoprotective mucus, you're going to be losing some of those functions. And so what happens is you're going to have some complications with your GI tract when you give an NSAID that has a COX-1 inhibition activity. So that can lead to ulcers and bleeding and all sorts of problems if you take too many NSAIDs or too much of, have too much of a higher dose of an NSAID with a COX-1 inhibitory activity. Because this PGE2 that is being formed via COX-1 also has a protective role in the GI tract. So other functions can be you know, gastric distress if you take an NSAID that inhibits COX-1, uh, gastric bleeding like I mentioned, uh, acute hemorrhage, things of those nature. But let's actually talk about what these COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitors are actually going to be. Okay, so the first inhibitor we're going to talk about is aspirin also known as acetyl salicylic acid, and it's going to inhibit COX-1. Now, aspirin can also inhibit COX-2, and it can be described as a non-selective inhibitor of COX, but we're going to talk about it in the context of inhibiting COX-1. So we're going to write down our inhibitors here. So we'll write inhibitors inhibitors and we're going to put down aspirin here also known as acetyl salicylic acid salicylic acid aspirin so again this is an NSAID this is a non-steroid anti-inflammatory drug it's inhibiting COX-1 so it's going to prevent these um, PGE2 activities in the GI tract, right? So it can lead to some uh, GI symptoms if you take too much. Now, the COX-2 inhibitor, so this is definitely a selective COX-2 inhibitor known as a celecoxib, or I think they're now just known as coxibs for short. So in the COX-2 inhibitors, we're going to have celecoxib, and so these are very selective for COX-2. And basically that means that they are really not going to have any effect on COX-1 at all. So you won't really have any COX-1 related side effects like these GI issues that we mentioned earlier. But the problem with COX-2 inhibitors or celecoxibs is that they can have cardiovascular problems. And there are a lot of different kind of mechanisms that can explain why they have cardiovascular problems. I'm not going to get into those right now, but for here, for now, we can just write that celecoxib can have cardiovascular risk. So cardiovascular risk. And then for aspirin, we're going to write GI symptoms. So kind of maybe looking at this, breaking down PGE2's functions as an algesic, pyresis, and uh, GI protectant kind of hopefully helps conceptualize what PGE2 does and how, whether it's made from PGE2, or sorry, from COX-1 or COX-2, can play a role in determining what its function is. And just really quickly before we end this, I want to kind of discuss, because I didn't really talk about it before, what um, cells are going to be basically expressing COX-1 and COX-2. So like we've said, that COX-1 
is going to be constitutive. So it's basically found in tissue. So you're going to find it, like I said, in your stomach, um, kidney, smooth muscle, platelets. So we can write those here that we're going to find them in stomach, kidney, smooth muscle, and platelets. Now, COX-2, like we said, is usually induced during inflammation. So you're going to see these in cells that are going to be involved in inflammatory responses. So we'll write inflammatory response. That's why it's going to, you know, PG2 when it's formed is going to lead to this al uh, algesia and this pyresis that we were talking about earlier. And if you remember from an earlier video, we, saw, we said that um, neutrophils are going to be producing PGE2 as well as macrophages, which are, you know, going to be the main cells during acute inflammation. So that should hopefully make a little bit of sense as to why PG or COX-2 is going to be mainly in inflammatory responses and it's going to be induced, whereas COX-1 is constitutive and it's going to be seen in a lot of your organs because it is, you know, continually being expressed and making prostaglandins. So hopefully this was a little bit helpful in deciphering what PGE2 does and explaining the role of prostaglandins in your regular constitutive day-to-day -day activity and in inflammatory response.